Engine 11, Man Am Central. The advice receiving multiple reports, third floor northeast corner, entire apartment is engulfed. That was dispatch audio from fire crews at the scene of an apartment fire in Mandan yesterday evening, and we just received word this morning the fire is now out. This is a look at the scene. Several crews responded to Eagle Ridge Apartments, which is right next to where the Sunset Bluff apartment building used to be. That apartment burned down around the same time last year. Happening overnight, city and county fire departments continue to put out hot spots and survey the damage at Eagle Ridge Apartments in Mandan. We begin our team coverage this morning with Julie Martin, who is live on scene with more details. Julie, can you tell us what's going on this morning? Oh, that's right. The Mandan Police Department said they responded to a fire out here last night around 7 o'clock. Now, that's all who remains out here this morning is the Mandan Police Department who say that they're staying here to make sure that no one goes towards the building or even in it. Fire crews have been out here since that time last night at 7 and left about an hour and a half ago. Like I said, all that remains are just some of the eerie sounds out here this morning. You can hear the water dripping down from the third and second floor. People's apartments are flooded after all that fire damage happened. You can also hear the faint sound of the fire alarms still going off inside of the building, along with generators that are pumping light onto this building after fire crews have been out here battling it all night. We're not exactly sure how many apartment com apartments are inside of this complex. If you count um, all the balconies on either side, there are 18. So if you times that by two, you can believe that there are probably 36 apartments inside of there. We're not sure how many of those are occupied or if there were any residents inside or if any of them are injured at this point. Fire crews, like I said, left about an hour ago. It's still under investigation. They're not sure how it started. I'm on the west side of the building right now. Most of the extensive damage from the roof all the way down to the second floor is on that east side. And like you said, Wayne, this is just kind of deja vu for people who live here because in July of last year this happened just parallel to a building like this one where it was completely damaged and a total loss. I'll be here all morning checking in and making sure that we get the most up to date information. You can also follow along on our website at KFYR TV and I'm going to send it back to Daniel Burbank who is live in the studio who talked to a family who not only has been through this once but twice. Julie, thank you. And as we've been talking about, it's been more than a year since the Sunset Bluffs apartment fire. Another fire in a newly constructed apartment building right next door has burned. Some residents are finding themselves in the same situation with no food, clothes, or even a place to call home. But during difficult times, communities come together. It's deja vu for residents of Eagle Ridge Apartments. Not again. Here we are again, and we just got everything situated. Shantisha Austin says she and her family of five survived last year's Sunset Bluffs fire only to lose everything a second time. I've been through a lot in life, so I kind of am resilient and kind of know how to stay strong and keep my composure, but I'm very hurt. We're very, we're hurt. Relief organizers from last year's fire returned to help Eagle Ridge apartment residents. It's even more devastating if that's possible than last year. Penny Barrett says they're focusing on immediate needs over the next 24 to 48 hours, but we'll meet this morning so we can sit down to come up with a long-term strategy. The American Red Cross is assisting families and the Sunset Apartment Fire Relief effort. They will start accepting donations again at 10 a.m. at the Blackstone Hotel on Old Ridge Trail, Old uh, Trail in Mandan. Uh, they're also looking for a warehouse to accommodate all of their supplies. Relief effort organizers say they plan to release more information uh, through their Facebook page. Just search Sunset Fire Official. Devastating images there, and we'll have more coverage of that throughout the morning. A developing story this morning. The fire that destroyed a Mandan apartment building is now out. Mandan firefighters say they responded to the Eagle Ridge Apartments just after 7 last night. That's on the 1600 block of 31st Street Northwest. The fire comes just over a year after another apartment building, Sunset Bluffs, burned down. Investigators say so far they're unsure exactly when or why that apartment com caught fire. Mandan police said they will keep a police presence to monitor that area.
And now residents say their scramble to safety is all too familiar. Morgan Bent heard their stories. When the flames erupted, one resident was lucky her daughter was on the lookout. She looked out and they were telling us to get out of the building. I said, no, I can't. I'm naked. I can't leave. I had to have throw a towel on and, and my daughter put a, a, throw a little diaper on her. My, my seven-year-old, she had to put a blanket on, left the shower running. Vanessa had renter's insurance following the fire they endured last year, but canceled it just one month ago, not expecting a second fire to break out in the same spot. To go through that two times, lose everything, just to, you know, start to feel like it's home again and then start all over again. The alarms sound far too familiar for some residents. One says this is the second building she's watched burn down from her own balcony. We're going to start packing our stuff and we're going to get out as soon as possible because I'm not not taking any chances. You, you don't think that this is going to happen, especially twice and right like summer after summer. But despite the rushed spread of the fire, some people still took time to help others. It was it was really nice to see the sense of community. Everybody was really trying to help each other in that building, but there's only so much you can do. Everybody just grabbed what they thought was important to them. Luckily, the fire didn't spread and the third building in the complex was left untouched. Reporting in Mandan, I'm Morgan Benth for your news leader. Community leaders are asking for small toiletry items to be brought to the Blackstone Hotel for those in need. To go through that two times, lose everything, just to, you know, start to feel like it's home again and then start all over again. Vanessa Christofferson has now gone through two fires in two years at the same apartment complex. She's one of dozens of people who have to figure out what to do next after last night's fire at Eagle Ridge. Now, this is the scene live over those apartments about a day after a massive fire consumed the third floor. Now, some who've watched the other two burn down say they're getting out as soon as they can. We're going to start packing our stuff and we're going to get out as soon as possible because I'm not not taking any chances. You, you don't think that this is going to happen, especially twice and right like summer after summer. We have live team coverage of this. Daniel Burbank is standing by at the Blackstone Hotel. Details on how the community is stepping up to help. But first, let's go to Julie Martin, who's on scene. Now, investigators say there are many similarities between last night's fire and last year's when the complex was called Sunset Bluffs. What can you tell us, Julie? That's right, Anna. All that remains of that fire that happened in July of 2019 is the foundation that it once stood on. Since that blaze, though, Mandan Fire Department has been urging for changes in privately owned fire hydrants and sprinkler systems attached to patios. Chief Steve Nardello says that those changes that were made in the past year changed last night when history repeated itself. These images show the remains of the Sunset Bluff apartments after a fire struck twice. On the right, a foundation from a fire on July 14, 2019 is all that stands. That year, while fighting the blaze, firefighters ran into issues with the privately owned hydrants. Low water pressure made it difficult to put out the blaze, along with the dozen firefighters that were treated for heat exhaustion. Although they were unable to determine how the fire started, they say it originated from a third floor patio. In recent months, the Mandan Fire Department has made changes to prevent future hydrant difficulties, which paid off on Monday. Chief Nardello says Monday's fire also originated on a third floor patio, displacing more than 30 families. Due to the hydrant checkups in previous months, crews had no issues fighting the blaze overnight. No firefighters or residents were injured during Monday's blaze. Mandan City Commissioners did update a building code stating that any overhang or awning on a patio longer than six inches must have a sprinkler system uh, it put in on that patio. Now, residents are not allowed back into uh, their apartment complex until the investigation is concluded by the Mandan Fire Department. In Mandan, I'm Julie Martin reporting for your news leader. Now, every victim of the Eagle Ridge apartment fire has a story. 
Some residents say they just moved in, while others were a week from moving out. Jacob Noterman spoke with one young family who's now looking for options on a much different timeline than the other victims. Austin, Jocelyn, and their young daughter had just moved into their new apartment on the third floor. But after smoke rolled into their unit and police told them to leave, they watched their home burn. It's, it's been really rough, you know. The Corcorans are a family of three that finally felt like they could take a deep breath. We can just get up there and I'm like, we'll be here for at least 13 months, we can relax. And so we were in that mode where we were unpacking and we're like, no, this is going to be nice. That is until Monday night when police banged on their door telling them to leave. We went to Walmart and um, we came out and we seen the flames shooting out of our daughter's bedroom. And I think that was like the moment when we realized that like everything was gone and that we barely made it out. But in their darkest moments, there's a ray of sunshine bringing smiles to the entire Blackstone Hotel. She's been yeah. great. It's like, you know, she, right? I don't think she really, um, it, it hasn't really affected Water? her. She didn't really see a whole What's lot. That? You know, we kind of sheltered her from it. And she's been really happy and go lucky, you know, just kind of being herself. But in the coming months, the Corcorans will be adding another bringer of smiles. Just one day before the fire, Austin and Jocelyn learned their family was growing. Going through all of it, this and then having a doctor's appointment first thing in the morning is really rough. Yeah, we were looking forward. It was a happy moment when we found out we were expecting again. It's still a very happy moment, and I think that's what's getting us through this. The Corcoran spent the night at a parent's house, but tonight, like many other displaced families, they'll be sleeping at the Blackstone Hotel. And residents aren't the only ones facing deja vu. Fire relief organizers responded to the same call for help after last year's devastating fire in Mandan. Well, Daniel Burbank is standing by live at the Blackstone Hotel at Relief Headquarters. Daniel. Anna, volunteers for the Sunset Fire Apartment Fire Relief effort never thought they'd have to reactivate their Facebook page. Behind me is a 40-foot donation trailer. This is just temporary until organizers can find another warehouse to store larger items. But event organizers say that this is going a lot more smoothly this year. Monday night, the unthinkable happened. Engine 11, Man and Central. We advise receiving multiple reports, third floor, northeast corner, entire apartment is engulfed. We first met Teresa Thompson last year when she lived in the Sunset Bluffs apartments. Now displaced again after a fire in the same complex. I don't know if, honestly, if I can move into another apartment. I don't know. Patty Barrett assembled the same fire relief team from last year just 30 minutes after Monday's fire started. What we learned last year is more of what the needs were, so we're able to anticipate a little bit better. Others like Taylor Fisher saw the fire on social media and wanted to help. I saw this and I was like, oh my goodness, these people, it happened for the second time and I was very shocked. Barrett says she stayed in contact with most of last year's fire survivors. It was great to see that people were making such great strides. But then to see this again, and even those that weren't in the second building, I know they're feeling issues too. Barrett says she estimates the Sunset Fire Foundation Center will be operational for at least two months or until every resident is settled. And back out here live, organizers are meeting across the street from the Blackstone Hotel at the Baymont Inn for anyone affected by this fire. They're discussing resources, needs, and providing counseling for those affected. For the latest information, search Mandan, or actually search Sunset Apartment Fire Official on Facebook. Live in Mandan, Daniel Burbank reporting for your news leader. Our thoughts and prayers are definitely with those victims today.